Maple Story, not a game I thought I'd be making a video about, but undoubtedly one of the most nostalgic MMOs that's still playable. This game was released in 2003 for Korea and Japan, before branching out globally and becoming one of the most popular games on the planet. At a time where most MMORPGs were subscription-based, giving a barrier for entry that was almost insurmountable for most people, MapleStory was one of the very first free-to-play games in the genre, which opened it up for so many more people. Which goes hand in hand with why a lot of people absolutely love this game and even today people rank it as one of their most nostalgic experiences in gaming if they come from an MMO background. Nexon contacted me to do a sponsored video on MapleStory, a proposition I generally turn down unless it's an indie game that already interests me. But after looking at their brief that I would need to follow for the video, it just said play the game and give your honest opinion. So I thought, all right, why not? If you're going to pay me to do that, you know, let's do it. Especially considering my experience with MapleStory as a game is that back in the day when it released, I was playing Counter-Strike Source on a team and one of them played MapleStory. So I downloaded, played for two hours and then stopped. My girlfriend, though, grew up playing MapleStory and was super excited when I told her about this sponsored opportunity since she absolutely loves the game. So all that is to say this video is sponsored, but I don't have to do anything. I don't have to steer clear of anything in the presentation. So I'm just going to talk about how I experienced playing the game. And if you want to play it, click the link in the video description or go to Steam and download it free to play all that good stuff. So let's get into it. Right off the bat, you choose between normal servers and reboot. This is an important decision and one I didn't really look into originally, only fact checking it when writing the script for this video. I chose to play on normal servers for this session, although after reading about reboot, I will probably swap over to Reboot after I post this. Reboot servers were introduced a few years ago and are Nexon's solution to people not wanting to play normal servers due to the pay to win. Reboot has a bunch of changes from the normal servers, including the restriction of trading. So you can't trade with anybody, not even characters on your own account. But most of the items that you would usually need to buy in the cash shop are purchased for in-game currency. I believe the exclusion being a pet that loots for you, because of course it does, and that is still a real life associated cost unless you farm one in the game, which you can do. You also get more experience, so you're going to level faster and the servers tend to be more populated. I believe mobs are harder as well, and it is supposedly better if you just want to log on and progress at your own pace without having to spend a bunch of money or buying things from other players. It's like Iron Man, I guess, or self found on Diablo or Path of Exile. And then normal's the opposite. Everyone can trade everything. Cash shop's pretty huge and super important the more you venture into the later of the game and contributes to the pay to win perception of maple story so after you choose your server you pick your class of which there's tons of cute characters that are all incredibly unique i chose to play the summoning girl because well mmrpgs these days don't have summoners in general or if they do they're you know very basic and if i'm going to play an old school mmo i'm going to play an old school mmo favorite which is a summoner Regarding the presentation of the game, as soon as you get in, MapleStory is aged like fine wine in some regards and in others like Mill. The game's graphics are timeless. It looks great and not just in terms of the art style, but the feeling the game gives you while you're playing. Everything's cutesy, vibrant, and it just feels cozy to play. It's relaxing, especially when you introduce the music, which is just really good. It just blends together really well. It's like returning to a warm fire after you've been outside in the rain. It's a testament how great they designed the aesthetics of the game for it to feel that way almost 20 years later. That being said, the graphical options and controls leave a lot to be desired. You can of course remap your buttons and set it to how you like to play. It comes with a new control scheme for people that are not used to the old MapleStory controls, but it does still feel like an old game no matter how you slice this one. In particular as well, the resolution options and lack of borderless windowed is a pretty big eyesore. The first time you load up the game, it's like you've gone to your mum's house and, and got your old Command & Conquer disc from the 90s and put it into a modern PC. It just absolutely destroys your desktop layout, messes with your second monitor, putting everything on the primary display, and it looks like you're looking at your really cool new screen through a toilet paper tube attached to a keyhole. They do then have a beta option for 1920 by 1080 which was nice, but you can't force this in windowed, so you either have a game that you can't tab out of without a delay in flashing black screen etc, or a window that's half the size of your monitor. And that is quite literally the worst part of the game, just a lack of graphics options for 2022 for modern monitors. In terms of the controls, you will get used to it eventually, just like anything else, it's not ideal, but once you do get used to it, it's perfectly normal. I could talk about how it's a bit of a headache, but honestly after 10 hours of playing, I was accustomed to it, and I was enjoying the lack of having to use my mouse to play the game, just my right hand on the arrow keys to move, 
move and left hand on abilities and jumping. And to be fair, after I got used to double hands on the keyboard and not having to touch my mouse, it became like totally comfortable. It actually felt like I could sit in my chair much more comfortably than I usually do. Now, in terms of the gameplay, this is again aged really well. It's it's fairly timeless, especially if you're someone who likes to play a game to see constant progression while also doing something else at the same time. I'm one of those people. There's two modes in my brain when I'm playing games either addictive gameplay loop that allows me to mostly focus on second monitor content like anime tv shows podcast twitch youtube videos whatever else and then the super focused i really need to pay attention to the story or the mechanics mode the latter is quite fatiguing and not one i can enjoy for long periods of time for example if i want to play the witcher 3 and really get into the story i can do that for a couple hours each day and then i've got to go do something else something that's less taxing on my brain and my focus if i want to shut down what i'm thinking about and just enter the matrix of seeing how efficiently i can grind mobs while listening to music or watching netflix maple story absolutely bangs this out of the park in fact a lot of the time i'd start grinding and i'd be like i'll put on some music in a minute and then like 35 minutes later i'd still not put any music on and my brain was like I thought you were going to put on music, and I still didn't. In terms of actually progressing your character, you get big bursts of power with new abilities quite frequently from the start. I went from, okay, this is kind of cool at level one, but this teleport's kind of small, to, oh my god, I can literally teleport horizontally or vertically across the entire map while shooting fell fireballs and summoning giant smashy smashy men on the other side of the map. At level 30, you unlock a bunch of new skills, then again at level 60, and no idea if it gets more than this, but you can really start to feel powerful around this time. And what can I say? I got so good at grinding on a certain map, the game thought the way I was moving around the map so quickly and killing everything that I was actually hacking, so I guess I'm just a professional Maple Story grinder. Another thing that really impressed me with Maple Story is just how loot works. And this was in two ways. The first being, I like when loot drops on the screen and I can see it over on the corner and I'm like, okay, what's that going to be? Because it's shiny and I want to go and find out what it is. And the second being that you have random stats on the same item. So you pick up five of the same item and they're all vastly different, including even the quality and the potential hidden stats it has. So there's multiple tiers of cool things that can be on an item that will make it different. So not only do you see something drop and be like, oh cool, what's that? You pick it up and then you also have the, oh cool, this has got much better stats than the one I had, even though it is the same item. You are constantly finding upgrades that are meaningful to both power and funnily enough, cosmetic progression, which is something that is lost quite a lot on modern MMOs. Maple Story does also have a ton of progression systems like upgrading the items you find, leveling up gives you stat points to allocate, skill points to allocate, and other supporting systems. One thing I will say about loot though, if you don't have a pet, which of course I didn't because I was playing on Classic, I do believe you get one straight away as like a rental service on, on Reboot. Items are going to drop all over the ground, but to loot them, you're going to have to stop killing monsters and spam your Z key to pick them up. So it's just unfun. I found myself not looting a lot of the time, so I was just leaving stuff everywhere, which doesn't feel fulfilling. But this is obviously something where they're nudging you to buy something in the cash shop. And if on reboot it's a small cost, that's probably not the biggest deal because at the end of the day, it's a free game, you, you're spending a bunch of time on it. But if you are playing on Classic, apparently these are expensive, so that might be an issue. In terms of ease of access for playing the game as MMO newbies, if you've only played the new school of games where your hand is firmly held a lot of the time, Maple Story can be a bit of a rude awakening for two reasons. The first being the map system is really confusing, and the second, it doesn't really go out the way to point where you want to go all the time. It requires some figuring out. Even as a veteran to this genre and these games, I got stuck quite often having to pull up Google and Wikipedia articles until I figured out the game just wanted me to read quest text in my journal and then it would tell me where to go and I just have to, you know, figure out how to operate the map, which was definitely an issue. I wouldn't say this is overtly a negative point. Obviously, the map could be better. It could be much more readable. But at the same time, in terms of reading the journal and then figuring stuff out, there are quests that tell you to go somewhere and find hidden areas. So, you know, something's nearby, but it doesn't directly point to it. There's no flashing door or anything like that. And it does feel like this is nudging you to actually read what's going on, which doesn't feel bad because the game's quality in terms of quest text and things is actually really good. There's a mix depending on what class you play, but some of the quests have amazing cutscenes that are animated like something out of a real feature anime you'd find on Crunchyroll. Some have old school cutscenes with text on screen and it just looks like the normal game you've been playing. In. but in general the writing was surprising i don't want to spoil too much but there are twists and really wholesome heartwarming storylines that were well worth a read especially for instance in the ice zone that starts at level 30 that was the point where i was like okay yeah i, I mean you've got me overall as you can probably tell i enjoyed my time with maple story enough to actually keep playing it for the time being which is not something i thought i'd be saying 
although I will probably be re-rolling to reboot servers first. The visuals are timeless, the music is fantastic in adding to the cutesy ambience of the game, and it just feels like a relaxing experience, which is sometimes exactly what you need. As a 31-year-old man, sometimes I don't really want everything to be, you know, like gory and dark and things like that. I just want to be able to log on and just be like, okay, this is cool. I'm going to, you know, watch something on Netflix and just chill out playing this game. The biggest issues are the ones I've already talked about. I hope they address these because it will just, you know, get rid of one of the immediate barriers for entry on the game. A windowed borderless with resolution support up to 4K set as default would really go a long way. Of course, the cash shop is something that will be a huge sticking point for people and the trade-off is playing an MMO on a server you can't trade with people, which does lessen the experience of an MMO in general, but at least you do have the option to choose between the two. And I would honestly give Nex on this advice, if you want to do another reboot, you know, reboot 2.0, maybe make like a subscription server or something where you get access to everything and you do still get to trade and things like that. I'd 100% pay for that one. So there you go. Thanks to Nexon for sponsoring this video. And hopefully if you guys do try out MapleStory, you enjoy it. Use the link in the video description if you do and let me know how much this tickled your member berries if you are an old school MapleStory fan. And I will see you next time, hopefully. Peace.